You want to join in? Come on. You want two more squats? Why are you too much? Huh? What time do you do? No, it's prime time. We changed that like a year ago. You're fired. I Gotta get a new girlfriend now. Okay. <laughs> What's up, prime? Blah, blah, blah. I can't get it either. We're going to get this. What's up, Prime Fam? So we're in the gym. We're gonna take you guys through my push hypertrophy day. So if you're on the Fusion program, if you're doing our group coaching over at prime-strength.com, today's a push day. We're on block two, week number three, I think. I tore my adductor this week for like the 20 billionth time. It's a problem. This time it's on the other side. It's honestly for me being stupid on squats and overshooting. But I'm gonna take you guys through this workout, talk to you about what I'm doing to prevent this and get around this. And I want to show the good and the bad. Today's not going to be a super heavy workout. The adductor tear is not bad. I might be able to do something decent, but it's definitely not going to be a PR. And I want to show you guys what I'm focusing on from movement, what I'm focusing on with mindset, and just everything to do with getting out of this pain. Because when I do go through an injury, I kind of redevelop new goals. Right now, it's not load the bar heavy. It's how can I make my squat prettier while I take a step back for a week or two. So we're gonna take you through the whole workout. We also got a ton of hypertrophy work today. I'm dying from sitting in this squat position. Let's start the music. I'm not tanning up at all. So, tore my adductor, and then of course I squat 405 for tempo pause reps for seven, which is the protocol called for seven reps this week. 
but I did a tempo pause sleeveless, which I get a lot out of sleeves. And that felt amazing. So strength is there. And funny enough, it doesn't hurt if I go slow. So when I caught the adductor tear this weekend, I re-wrapped right away. It was a very minor tear at first, but it was one of those ones, if I keep moving on it, it was gonna get worse. And then I, I went to deadlift and my foot slipped during deadlift because the, the ground was really slippery from the fucking dust in the gym. And then it hurt worse. So um, was limping the next day, but got on top of my daily movement and rehab. And today I was able to do this. It was weird because warming up with an empty bar if I moved too fast hurt. Same thing on every set after that because I was trying to do normal reps. It just kept hurting. But if I went hella slow and loaded my glutes well, no pain. So really, really happy with that. 405 tempo pause. Now a couple things I was doing there that I, I was trying to focus on. Two things. One, internally rotating my grip and shoulders more. Uh, I've developed a bad habit sometimes to over, over externally rotate my uh, shoulders in a, a high bar and a low bar squat, which can feel really secure, but it was costing me a little too much on my wear and tear on my shoulders and elbows. So I was internally rotating to kind of give them a break. And then the other thing I was really focused on that I can't stress enough for you guys is I was really trying to load into positions that I wanted to be in. Especially during my warm-ups, when I was coming out of the hole, I wasn't letting my hips shift back. Trying to force my hips to stay under me and not get that kind of chest fall, hip rise, as Mike Tuchere calls it, which I just call knee recession, which is when your adductors kind of kick on as hip extensors, you shift into the posterior, bend over, and then scoop the hips back under at the top. That is not something you want to cue. It can happen on maximal attempts and loads, but it's something you want to prevent from happening until it gets very hard. That's what started happening to me on those later reps of the 405. As I went on, it got a lot harder and I was tipping over. So two goals here today were secure my shoulders. The reason why is the more secure my upper body and shoulders are, and the more rigidity I had in my trunk, the better hip position I could keep. If my hips receded back at all, like when I was doing the faster warm-up sets, uh, my adductors were kicking on because they kick on as hip extensors in, in that portion of the squat. And that was when the adductor was hurting. If I prevented that, it was like nothing was hurt or injured. So locked into upper shoulder griddle and got it all uh, secure and really worked on forcing position on the warmups and feeling my heels like crazy because I didn't want to fall into my toes. I use bumper plates because the metals here are not calibrated at all. They're like, some of them weigh like 42 pounds, others like 48, we've weighed them. The bumpers are much more accurate and I actually like whip on high bar squats a little bit. Not too much whip, but channeling that, that Clarence Kennedy. Uh, anyway, gonna move on now to the next stuff. So we had ascending sets there, hit 365, 405. Now I got some bench press. Let's go nice and tight. Clean movement. Good. Already halfway, come on. Two more. Nice. Sit up tall or bend Just over? Just go, go further back. Well, You're going to get my Michael Hearn. <laughs> if any of y'all watch Michael Hearn and notice how he always wears shirts that are like, like just open like this, it's so unnecessary, but low key is fucking jacked, so whatever. Um, all right, guys, so I'm on bench press here. I've built up on this thing a few different times. So I got up to 330, couldn't bench it right, went back down, stripped it down, redoing the movement all the way up. When I drop that, or I put down very aggressively that 672 beltless pause deadlift that I did the other day, I like, well it was not the other day, it was fucking three weeks ago now, 
I slammed it into the ground because I was hyped and it, it fucked my palm up bad. Like it's hurting so much, especially when I wrap my wrist and bench press, I don't know why. Um, when my wrist isn't wrapped, it doesn't hurt that bad, but I'm also really weak without wrist wraps. I have very fucking weak forearms and small wrists. So it, it kind of sucks. So I'm rebuilding back up, trying to get form down. My bench is also just in the shitter right now. Like cutting is not fun. Hitting new low body weights is awesome but like my leverage on benches feels trash. Uh, squat and dead still feel really good, but bench press is definitely taking a hit, so I'm not used to it. Uh, so I'm trying to perfect movement above all else right now. I have to reinvent the goals. Mindset needs to change away from how can I get more load on the bar to how can I have the most beautiful bench press for me right now? And that's what I'm trying to get down. That way when I'm out of the deficit, it can climb again. so hard to stabilize without wrist wraps, but really focusing on slight more internal rotation, bringing chest to the bar and getting the elbows a little bit more stacked and under, seems to be the only way I can bench right now. Okay guys, so moving on to the accessory work of the hypertrophy day on our program, teaching program, go run it. Uh, we're doing the hack squat here angled at a 45 degree angle. I love this machine, it's my favorite hack squat by far. It allows for the most body variance. Now you do not have to keep your butt against the pad this whole time. You're gonna notice I kind of shift my butt off of the pad, really load those quads forward, and that actually feels better on my knees than keeping my butt on the pad and kind of you know angling the, the feet a little further down. Um, so the goal here is quad hypertrophy. I'm trying to go slow with the tempo, not involve other muscle groups. I'm treating this like a bodybuilding exercise. Targeted compound work is what I look at this like. How can I do a big compound movement but try to mostly use quad and remove everything else? So narrow stance. Usually I wear my squat heels today, I'm not. For no particular reason other than I'm just kind of lazy to put them on. And my ankle dorsi flexion getting a little better. I'm gonna go real controlled and slow on the way down. Load forward into those knees. Press back up. Woo, it's heavy. Okay guys, so moving on to the upper body hypertrophy portion. So finish out legs, we have the hack squats, the leg extensions. Today I'm doing some hamstring press. This actually isn't on the fusion program. Um, I was supposed to do Larson press earlier, but I'm just feeling so beat up from this cut. My joints just don't feel good on bench press right now. And I got the palm thing. So I'm gonna go on this hammer strength. These things are amazing. If you saw my chest hypertrophy video, the best way to train your pecs to grow for size, um, we talked about the resistance curve on these and how awesome it is. The other thing about this machine is you can maneuver your body in different positions to target small different areas of your pecs and you can kind of alter if you want to train more end range or stretch or whatever. So what I mean by that is there's a big difference getting in here and getting set kind of like almost like a power lifter. This is a huge stretch emphasis, okay? Pecs are maximally stretched here and if I press, they're contracted but look at the difference when I protract and go more like this. You get more pec involvement there. So you can train this getting more stretch, focusing more on end range contraction, both you can get an active scapula while you're doing this. You can get more into an arch, less into an arch for more incline. You can alter your body in ways that you can't do on the bench press. 
So I really like this for being very specific to areas I want to target. Now, if you're a beginner, just fucking move weight. You know, you shouldn't be focusing on that. You don't have the coordination down or the technique down to even understand how to target little different areas of your chest. But today, I'm gonna to go a little bit more flat back and really try to hammer the super high clavicular fibers. Try and get that Michael Hearn so I can wear my shirt all open. So we're gonna go with just two plates here. I can throw up three plates and some change on this. We're going light, focusing on movement and contraction. Okay, so flat back to start. I'm not going for maximal stretch here. Big breath in. Squeeze pecs together at the top. Come back apart. Squeeze. So notice I'm not arching on the way down very hard. Triceps, chest, I don't know how I'm gonna show this, if I'm using music or not. Might not even include this part, but I'm gonna do some delts here. And this exercise is actually a really unique one. Train to end range lateral delt fibers. I did a whole video on it private for the group coaching members. Not only do you get the program, but you get access to a lot of videos where I explain the biomechanics in very simplistic terms that do not make it confusing. I'm not here to teach you guys uh, like a textbook. I'm here to explain how things work to you. So we did a whole video on that in the group coaching. Um, so I'm not going to explain it here, but basically this trains lateral delts in a very different way than your lateral raises do. by saying I hope you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, comment, all that shit. But she's gonna start a YouTube channel. It's officially announced. And she's so procrastinating the shit out of it. She has for like months. Yeah. And so she's doing it. Go subscribe to her because by the time this video is out, it will be started. She will have videos present. We'll leave the link in the description. I don't even know what we're gonna call it. But you 100% should go subscribe. <laughs> yes. It's funny because we didn't even talk about this and she didn't know I was going to say this at all. No. But now you have to go and now you have to start it. it. Now you have no excuse. <laughs> I've been wanting her to start a channel because I can't appeal to females the way she can. She can connect to them a little bit better. She can show them what her workouts are like, how she tweaks her workouts for her goals and talk more about mindset, connect to that female psyche because I think that's important. So you guys go check her out. She's definitely gonna be sorry. I know a bunch of you guys, a bunch of people actually do ask all the time. Yeah, I have a yeah. few girls who are like begging me, they're tired of seeing my ugly ass. So <laughs> we'll catch you guys in the next video.